Hello everyone, welcome back to the Certified Jenkins Engineer 2020 exam. Uh, basically, this is the Certification Catalyst series and we are with question 8. Uh, in a distributed build architecture for Jenkins, what is the best practice regarding the agent of the slave Jenkins home? Uh, a. There is a hard upper limit of 5 agent nodes per Jenkins master node. B. You should treat Jenkins slave nodes as fungible or replaceable in the sense that they should not store important configuration information that cannot be recreated within the build process. C. You should not mix agents of different OS types like Windows or Linux. It is better to use only one type of agents to keep control of the system. D. Always use cloud agents. Do not use on-prem agents as they are not that secure or cost-effective. Okay, again we are back with the distributed build architecture and now this is a question about agent or uh, the slave Jenkins host. So if I go to this document, see, creating fungible agents. Okay, so the concept fungible means basically replaceable. Okay, so the idea that is there is that uh, if you go over this entire document, okay, so this is a very good document architecture for scale which I always refer. So see, the basically the idea is that my slave nodes should be fungible or replaceable. I should treat them as uh, cattle, not as pets. Meaning, today if I have one VM, and tomorrow if that VM shuts down, and I s drop it or terminate it, and then I start another VM, I should not have any problem. Both of those VMs should be uh, equally capable of uh, supporting my build steps. So what does that mean? That means that I cannot store any configuration in my VM. Uh, uh, that will make it unique so every VM needs to be a generic VM okay so I can have a generic AMI for every single VM uh, I cannot store unique configurations in each VM but say for example my build pipeline needs a specific uh, dependency for example it needs Maven to run okay because it's a Maven project it is a pom.xml now uh, one of the options is to manually go uh, into the VM install Maven it will work of, of course but the problem is tomorrow if I delete that VM and start another VM again okay then I will again have to go in and install Maven there otherwise my build will fail and it's not a good case because I want my agents to be replaceable easily replaceable so in such a case what I should do that all my dependencies that is needed to successfully build or deploy my project they should be installed or downloaded or configured as part of my pipeline itself so I should have a step somewhere which will be for example a simple shell script sudo yum install mvn for example okay so the concept is mostly that you should have uh, fungible agents okay uh, who can be easily replaced and another concept here is uh, cloud agents so if i go here clouds cloud agents so this is also a very very popular uh, um, situation where what happens is that you can use this kind of plugins like EC2 plugin, Azure VM Agents plugin, and what they do is that they are dynamically created. So the VM will be dynamically created, the build process will run, and they will be dynamically deprovisioned when they are not needed. So the utilization is low, you can deprovision them also. So this is also a very particular use case. So coming, so please read about this distributed build architecture. You will get questions on this topic, maybe three to four at least. So this is related to a lot of things in Jenkins. So as you can see the option number one is incorrect there is no hard limit as such that there needs to be five agent nodes per jenkins master node dx there might be some problems if you have say 10,000 uh, agent nodes for one jenkins master node but there is no hard limit also you should treat Gen yeah b is the correct answer okay so you should treat jenkins slave nodes as fungible or replaceable in the sense that they should not store any important config information that cannot be recreated within the build process See, you should not mix agents of different OS type. This is complete bullshit because you should mix agents, and that is one of the reasons. Because, for example, you want to run um, uh, iOS pipelines, you want to run, for example, um, Linux pipelines or Windows pipelines. But if you have just one uh, master Windows server, then you will not be able to do so. So your agents also give you that uh, extra flexibility that you can run workloads on different types of uh, OS versions. And D, always use cloud agents, do not use on-prem agents, they are not that secure or cost effective. No, you might have to use on-prem agents. For example, there are uh, places within your code where you have a dependency on your on-prem. For example, there is a database that your uh, on-prem application uh, needs to access. Uh, then you cannot install your uh, cloud uh, agent, it will not have access to that on-prem database. 
So the answer is basically B. We should treat Jenkins slave nodes as fungible or replaceable in the sense they should not store important config information that cannot be recreated within the build process. Okay, so thank you everyone. Please uh, share your comments. Uh, thank you. Take care.